Ready, 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 man. We go, we go, we go. You guys ready? Yeah. Can you speak? Oh, Paul, you forgot your phone, right? Everyone. Guys, um, this is Amsterdam. I'm somewhat tired, as you can tell. So we've been traveling all night uh, on, the, on, the, on the amazing uh, Peach Drive bus. And uh, I think we arrived at about 7 a.m. or so. It was a bit of an issue getting into the hotel, checking it. But eventually we did. Um, everyone had to shower within probably 20, 30 minutes. And we're here at TQ. So TQ is this um, lovely co-working space. Uh, I think the incubator as well. Um, right in the, in the heart of Montreal, uh, as you can see. Um, I think they have a strong affiliation. They're part of the, the, the next web, uh, the next web event, of course, which is a big event, tech event that happens in Amsterdam, uh, uh, you know, every year. As a matter of fact, that's the founder of the next web somewhere in the corner. I think we'll try to get them on camera if possible. Um, so I'm super excited. Uh, there's been, there's always been a lot of interest from, from the Netherlands and Africa, especially in tech space as well. Uh, Amsterdam is home to VC uh, for Africa. Uh, the Airban, which is the Africa Business Angel Network, is quite strong in Amsterdam as well. Uh, strong representation. Uh, so you know there are quite a number of good investors here who understand the African landscape and also are interested in investing in Africa. So I'm pretty optimistic that this may actually beat what we got from London. So I'm expecting that, you know, it may not be that much crowd, but I think the quality of the crowd here may, may be way better than, than what we got in London. Um, so yeah, you know, what can I say? Um, I'm gonna go in to ensure that the startups are ready, uh, that they're in good shape, uh, no names, and everyone is ready to, uh, to put in their best. And I'm looking forward to, enjoying this great city as well because we're going to be here for the weekend so you can imagine what's going to happen later today tomorrow and we've got sunday as well so you know guys stay tuned and uh be part of the show see you soon i was trying to get away from the shot yeah but you can't get away from the camera man the camera follows you everywhere So 
So, first day in Amsterdam. Yeah. How do you feel so far? Great, actually. What are your thoughts? I mean, I think it's a very cultural type city because, you know, oh, I think it's a very cultural city. You know, we walk in and, you know, I see farms. I see, you know, people are riding bikes as a means of transportation. It's, it's pretty weird for me. Like, in Lagos, everyone has a car, or at least most people do have cars, and you don't really see people drive bikes. I mean, like, bicycles. So, yeah. In terms of exercise, I think it's very refreshing. Yeah, it's, it's, I like the energy as well. Like, yeah, and then we're coming in, and then there's like a farmer's market, like down. Yep. So it's really beautiful and colorful, and yep. you see that there are lots of people come there because it was super packed. And then we're here, and this space is beautiful. So, what would you say would be the main difference between your experience in London and Amsterdam so far? What, what would you say? I mean, I just got here. I don't know if I can really say, oh, this is a difference, well, the but there's like a different right? vibe. Yeah. Because London is more. <laughs> I can't really use words. <laughs> London is more, and this place is more. It's a little more relaxed. Than yeah, London. this is like yeah, dancing to like this Hawaiian like <laughs> type thing. <laughs> yeah. And so how that's many how days I are feel. We in Amsterdam for? Okay, so we're here between um 18 to the 22nd. So that's about. Uh, sorry, guys. So it's here like this. So you were saying too. So that's about five days. Uh huh. Yeah, about five days. Brilliant. Thank you. I will be coming back to you for updates. Oh, okay. So very it's a privilege to be here with you. I was at the Nesweb last year, and, and I thought that was the best tech event I've been to. I met the prince. So so Amsterdam has been on my mind. So when we decided to put this talk together, we thought we had to come. In. Um, what's your take on the tech scene here, and how do you think the African entrepreneurs can benefit? I think it's a very uh, diverse uh, tech scene, very open, right. and very internationally focused. So the Netherlands is a very small country, mm -hmm. so we always look abroad. Uh, like any startup you want to start here, yeah. you've got to think about the international from the start. Yeah. So, so I think it's a very open community, very welcoming. Yeah. And, uh, and what would you say? So if a startup in Africa is thinking, looking, looking at the Netherlands for, say, funding or incubation, yeah. How, what advice would you give to them as to, to um, how to prepare for Make that? some friends. Like, so the local um, ecosystem is simple, yeah. but you still got to know where to go. So, and I think people in Amsterdam are very open, very friendly, so it's easy to make friends. Yeah. But if you start with that, so go to a few events like these, uh, mingle with the locals, yeah. and find out like what are their paths. Yeah. And I like it. And an introduction always makes all the difference in the world. So start there. And, T and TQ. TQ is a few months old and is already a major, major hot spot. Yeah. Uh, how can how can people benefit from this if they come to Amsterdam? What, well, what can they look forward to? Uh, just drop by. Uh, so we designed it to be like the center of, uh, of the ecosystem, yeah. Yeah, like a place where everybody knows if there's an event about digital tech, this is the, the logical place to go. Mm -hmm. So it's a great starting point. If you, if you come to Amsterdam, you don't know anybody yet. Yeah. This is a great place to start. Thank you so much for hosting us. We appreciate it. Thank you. This is Amadou from Gibea. We're here in Amsterdam. Just came in this morning. Uh, we have about maybe 50 um, investors that we'll be pitching today. We're doing some exciting stuff. This trip is really something very special because this is the first time it's actually been done where African startups from the continent are actually traveling to Europe, pitching around. You see the investors, you see actually the diaspora appreciating what we're doing. I just want to make an announcement. Make sure you uh, product coming out of Gibea soon. Kukuru. 3D mobile application game coming up soon for my friend and teams from Ethiopia. Thank you guys. Hey, hey, hey. hey guys, here we are in Amsterdam. I'm
So many other spaces across the world. But the change we're seeing is that this movement is no longer unique to just one location. Uh, we're beginning to see this movement in very unlikely places um, around the world, including cities in Africa. Um, the uh, co-founder of CCO, and on behalf of each and everybody on this call, would like to say a big thank you to CQ and, and Google for Entrepreneur. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening. selected jury for today. They will ask a question after each startup's pitch, but they will also later give some, some feedback. But before we dive into that, I would love for them to introduce themselves so we know who you are and you know who we are and then everybody knows each other when we get started. Um, who can I give the microphone for? Yeah? Okay. There you go. Hi everybody, my name is Els Boerhoff. We are an impact investment firm and we invest in businesses in Africa and India that solve a social and or an environmental problem. Good afternoon and uh, great to be here, thank you. Uh, my name is Eileen Blauwer, and you in between, and uh, blue, a blue farmer. <laughs> uh, I'm um, currently based here, I've, I lived in Kenya for 10 years uh, where uh, I've been running TBL Mirror Fund which is an SME equity fund. We were one of the first before this whole wave of investing in Africa started um, and uh, moved on from investing in fast-growing SMEs to uh, more focusing on early-stage uh, tech-enabled businesses. Hi, uh, Philip Kauenhofer. Sorry for uh, being so late and I'm uh, still out of breath. 
Uh, so I keep it short. Um, I launched the Ventures Africa Fund also in 2010. So we're active in um, the tech space, mostly mobile internet, some fintech investments. We've done investments in Kenya, Ghana, South Africa, Nigeria. Um, that's about it. Um, last question. Entrepreneurs, are you ready? Yeah! yeah. Jerry, are you ready? Sort of. Yes, I think, I think we got it now. And the rest of the crowd, are you ready? Yes! Amazing. Then, without further ado, I'd like to welcome the first startup here tonight, Jeff Bia. Bia, Bia. I'll give you the microphone and the clicker, and you can explain all about it. All right, this is Quebec. Quebec. It means marketplace in Amharic, Ethiopia. All the way from Ethiopia. Brace yourself, Africa is the next IT outsourcing hub. It's happening. India is even investing right now in Africa to, to have the next software development services developed in companies like Infosys because it's cheaper and the time zone is perfect. What do we do? We solve uh, three problems essentially. The first one is a lack of software developers. This is in Africa and I'm sure it's in Europe. I've been reading that there's a lot of problems in finding good software developers in Europe. Uh, the other thing is that in Africa, if you're a good software developer sometimes, you may not be able to find job. Right? And the third one, if you're a startup, most of these guys, they always struggle to find the right talent. So we came up with an engineer model of three pillar, a tripod. In one side, we train developers to be specialists. We're not a coding school. We train them to be very specific with what they do. So say, mobile fintech developer. It's very specific. We get paid doing that. Uh, the next thing is a marketplace. Once they graduate, we put them up for, for clients to hire them, and they take 75% of the money, talking about impact. We don't get is we're trying to help businesses improve how quickly they respond to customers and the, and the quality of those responses. The truth of the matter is businesses actually care, but they're overwhelmed by the amount of, of, of channels that they have to support and the volume of conversations. So we've taken messaging, which is what we use every day. I'm pretty sure lots of us here use WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, to keep in touch with our friends and family, and social media in general. So businesses are overwhelmed by the amount of messages they have to uh, respond to customers. Are you ready? Yes. You have to wait very long. You're still late. Toronto is still late. Ladies and gentlemen, can we get a round of applause? Okay. Uh, thank you very much. My name is Wilson Tegekan. I'm from Kampala, Uganda. Uh, CEO and founder of Clint Master. Uh, our goal at Clint Master is one to reduce the waiting time for a patient when they go for treatment at the hospital. Uh, currently, in most Ugandan hospitals, you find they have several departments, laboratory, pharmacy, and cashier. Unfortunately, each department uh, run an independent system, manual, electronic. They are not interconnected, which means if you move from one department to another, they have no idea of what was happening to you. And uh, on top of that, these hospitals are not able to exchange data so that the patient's medical record can be shared across the country wherever you go for proper treatment. Now, uh, in turn, it will lead to uh, uh, stockouts, for example, expiry of drugs because they are able to uh, plan properly and, and so many other challenges that they are facing. Now, this is how Clinic Master comes in. Our purpose at Clinic Master is a to digitize and also automate the different service points of the hospital and after that interconnect the hospitals to be able to share medical data and also get the patient on this uh, network to be able to get informed of their health status. For example, on the Clinic Master platform, a patient can schedule an appointment, a patient can uh, find out where a specialist is and how many patients they see per day, uh, uh, that kind of thing. So we are basically interconnecting through our network. Uh, our business model is simple. Uh, we charge an annual uh, a license per user. User in this case mean the staff at the hospital who are working on our system and also charge an annual support of 20% uh, which is given uh, every year. Uh, currently we have over IT customers in Uganda, Kenya, and also South Sudan. We are number one in Uganda, the most world locally developed system, and we are looking for $2 million in a funding of 12 months 
to be able to expand in other markets in the region because most of them face a similar challenge. Here is our contact, China. Yes, hi. Uh, my name is Berto. I work with PC for Africa and uh, we're here at TQ in Amsterdam. Uh, we just witnessed 14 awesome uh, companies from uh, Nigeria and other uh, markets around Africa who only had three minutes to pitch uh, uh, their business. And uh, I knew about half of them already, so I met uh, seven new companies uh, today. And uh, yeah, I think uh, the idea of uh, African companies pitching in Amsterdam instead of asking investors to go to, to Lagos is, is an excellent idea. Uh, because you can reach uh, a lot of uh, a lot of potential investors and, and other people who are interested uh, by just touring around Europe. So uh, well done, uh, Pitch Drive. Uh, it's 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 awesome. Hi everyone. My name is uh, David Van Dijk. Um, I'm here today at the uh, Pitch Drive in uh, in Amsterdam at the TQ building. Um, it was great to see the entrepreneurs. It's great to, uh, to welcome everyone to Amsterdam. Um, in my daily life, I work a lot with uh, entrepreneurs in Africa via a company called VC for Africa. And I work a lot with investors in Africa via the African Business Angel Network. Um, so I spend a lot of time in Africa and it's great to now sort of welcome everyone over here. Um, I think that uh, Bosun is an absolute uh, rock star. Um, I think that the CC Hub is probably the most uh, innovative, um, creative, exciting, and successful uh, innovation space, tech space in Africa. Um, so compliments to, uh, to Bosun and his team for making this possible. Um, and I wish everyone a, a, a great onwards journey as they, as they travel throughout Europe. And to keep up with everything that's going on with the Pitch Drive, hit the subscribe button.